November 4, Hotel, November Hotel. November 4, November Hotel. November, November. I messed it up. Doug, I'm missing your call out. November 4, Hotel, November Hotel. Doug, good evening. How you doing? Uh, doing great there, Ira. Uh, you're, you're strong in Atlanta. I'm going to give you about a 5.8, five, 5.9, five, uh, bouncing a little bit with QSB, but very strong. Thanks a lot um, for picking me up. Okay, no problem. You're 5.8 here, 5.8 solid copy. Thanks for the 5.8 and 9 there. I'm on the ICOM 7300. Turn the head to wire, Doug. Roger that. Well, doing a great job. Great audio, as usual, as you would expect from a 7300. Uh, 73T, Ira, uh, VP2, EIH. This is in 4 H and H. All right, uh, Doug, 73. November 4, H and H. I like it that way. <laughs> 73. Have a good weekend, Doug. Thank you. Okay. Hey, in 4 H and H here. So I, want, I wanted you to see that uh, mainly for this reason here. Of course, 10 meters is open. That's great. Um, now, you know, you're watching the meter and going, why did I give the guy 5859? Five, well, you may have seen. I'm on amp one, and I'm on 10 meters. In all honesty, uh, the S meter is not going to be accurate at, at amp one up on 10 meters. Uh, that's why they give us a second amp. But... And so I told him 5859. You may have noticed he did bounce to the 59 once in a while. Uh, so I'm going to log at 59. And, um, but what I wanted you to see is why I'm not using amp 2 when I'm talking to him. You hear all the noise? In between his words, listen. Okay, now I'm going to go to Amp 1. Much better signal to noise ratio. By the way, those of you with a 5000, I know I've shown this here and there in other videos, but let me show you some. Now, if you're on I Amp 2, IPO 1, or IPO 2, and you want to immediately go back to your, your Amp 1, you just press straight in. Press straight in uh, on the button here that you use to uh, switch amps. Okay, it's called the IPO button. See, intercept point optimization, but press straight in and it'll go straight back to amp one. Any of these buttons revert to their defaults if you press straight in. Uh, they are, you know, toggles up and down, but if you press straight in, they also have a function which is go back to default. But I wanted you to see quickly there just the improvement to the signal to noise ratio by um, going down to amp one. I believe I could probably hear him at IPO one. Let's try it. Remember intercept point optimization one on transceivers that have it, uh, this particular one does. That still has a little bit of amplification, very little. They, they amplify the signal just to the point where it begins to degrade the signal to noise ratio. So see, I, I can still hear him even with just th that little bit of amplification. Now, IPO2, for those of you with an FTDX5000, that's completely bypassing any amplification in that first IF. So basically the signal is just it's mixed and then it's routed directly to uh, the roofing filter. So let's see if we can hear him with IPO2. Not as good a copy. Now, think about it. If he was nine or more, IPO2 would be more than enough. Now, for those of you who have a transceiver that does not have IPO2, what you could do is go to IPO1 and, and put in 6 dB of attenuation. The FTDX10 could do that, FTDX101, D or MP. Now, of course, another option, going back to default. 
Roll the RF gain back. Zero noise. Of course, um, if you know how to operate a Yaesu RF gain, you know what you're doing is you're watch the S meter. You're going backwards and you're think of it as an S meter squelch. You're going backwards and you're putting the needle basically at the what signal level you think they're coming in at or or slightly below it. Actually, I'm putting it well above where he's coming in, but I can still hear him. Three will be enough. Now, see, he's rising just above the three. Now, if you're in a QSO, like with a round table with two or three people, then you're going to want to set the RF gain to the level of the weakest signal that you're listening to. Or, again, slightly below it. Even if you want to put it right on it, you can. You know, if there's S3, you put it on S3. And you may just turn your volume up a little bit to make up for it. But the general rule is put it right below the weakest signal. Okay, just a, you know, a little quick video there. Um, you got to you know, see that 10 meters is open. And I worked uh, Victor Papa 2 Echo India Hotel. That's Ira uh, down in Anguilla. So... Um, that was cool too, and uh, but also I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to show you why I would adjust my what I call gain stages, okay, gain stages, to achieve the best signal to noise ratio. If you've been watching the channel very long, you know that I am not about an S meter, okay. I'm all about, I'm, I use it for relative reasons, like I'm doing here, but. Um, more important is hearing the station than watching that S meter bounce back and forth. And so, you know me, I always go for the signal to noise ratio, S slash N ratio. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Thank you to the Patreon team who help keep this channel uh, uh, going. And if anyone out there likes this type of content, if you're new, you just stumbled across this video, if you like this type of content, um, you can help me keep bringing it by becoming a Patreon member, a member of the Patreon team. Uh, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH, patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. I'll put that on the display here. And, uh, of course, if you would, also, you can help me out by liking the video. Click that little thumbs up. Uh, that helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. And, of course, consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe to the channel, be sure to click the notification bell, and you will be alerted when I upload the next video, generally one a week, sometimes two a week. Okay, hey, again, thanks for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.